So I've used this camera for a little over a year now, so I wanted to share some of my thoughts on it, using it for YouTube videos, spec projects, and even some paid gigs. As some of you know, Lumix actually sent me this camera as part of a campaign in summer of 2023. And since then, it's been my daily driver for almost everything that I do. Since getting this camera, I've seen a lot of other creators that I respect pick it up as well. So as more and more people choose to go with this camera over something from Canon or Sony, I wanted to share some of my biggest pros and cons after using it for over a year. There's a lot of notable features about this camera and I'm not gonna be going over every single one. If you'd like to see the videos that I did showcasing some of these features, I'll put a playlist right up there that you can check out. I made that back in summer of 2023. So first let's talk about the pros. One of the things that I love about this S52X is just the options that you get when it comes to codecs and aspect ratios. There are so many different aspect ratios to choose from. You can shoot open gate three x two, super 35, four x three, and of course, 16 by nine in a bunch of different codecs. Everything from highly compressed MP4s, H.265, all I, and even ProRes internally if you're okay with shooting 1080p. When I first got this camera, I shot in ProRes 1080p a lot because I was using an older MacBook Pro, and even older computers can handle ProRes pretty easily. And with a recent update, you can actually shoot a beefy codec into one of the card slots, and then in the second card slot, record a proxy. So when you're ready to edit, you can just edit with the proxy files, which are a lot easier on your computer. And that's something that's actually really cool, and you typically only see that on higher-end cinema cameras. So the next thing that I love about this S52X is just how rugged and reliable it is. Whether you're in a super hot environment or you live in a wet and rainy climate like I do, you don't really have to worry about this camera. So I've shot a full day in the hot sun with this camera and it never skipped a beat. And I've also been at the base of waterfalls getting sprayed by mist and haven't had to worry about this camera crapping out on me. This camera has an internal fan, so it's not gonna overheat on you and it's weather sealed. So whether you're going out into kind of a wet or dusty environment, you don't really have to worry. And that's something that I've always loved about all the Lumix cameras that I've had is that they've all been really rugged and I haven't had to think twice about taking it into kind of harsh environments. So yeah, if you've never bought a Lumis camera before, that's something that you can look forward to is that they're really rugged and they're not going to crap out on you during a shoot. So the next pro is just the ergonomics and ease of use. Everything is laid out really well on this camera. It's got a really nice grip and it has a viewfinder, which will really help you out on sunny days. So for ports on this camera, you have a USB-C port, which you can use to either trickle charge your camera with an external battery, or you can record externally to an SSD. You have a full-size HDMI, which again, you can output to something like an Atomos Ninja V or a Blackmagic Video Assist and record raw video. And you have a mic and headphone jack. A quick side note, the preamps on this camera are actually pretty good. If you're someone who uses a lot of XLR microphones, there is an additional XLR adapter that you can buy for this camera, which will also phantom power your mics. So there's a lot to love about the S52X, and it's arguably one of the best bang for your buck cameras when it comes to the image you get paired with all the features. So now let's talk about the cons. I've already made a video highlighting some of my frustrations with this camera on my second channel, and I got a lot of flack from a lot of passionate Lumix fans. But just keep in mind that none of the cons of this camera would ever prevent me from recommending it to somebody, especially at its current price point. I bought my first Lumix branded camera back in 2014, and my first camcorder ever that I bought myself was a Panasonic camcorder back in like 2004. So if anyone has any bias, it's definitely me. But with all that being said, I do think that there are some shortcomings to this camera that you should know about before picking it up. I don't think that any camera is perfect. So the first con is the readout speeds and rolling shutter. So every time I see a video where someone is talking about how much better this camera is than something from Sony, they always seem to just gloss over the readout speeds and rolling shutter performance. The readout speed of this camera in full frame mode is about 22 milliseconds, which causes a lot of rolling shutter. And I guess if you keep your camera on a tripod most of the time, or you're just moving the camera very slowly, that won't really be a big issue for you. But if you film any type of action sports or just action in general, where you're moving the camera a lot, 
It's kind of a bummer. And just so we're clear, the readout speed of something like a Sony a7S III is about 8.7 milliseconds in full frame mode. So 22 milliseconds versus 8.7, that's a pretty big difference. So rolling shutter isn't the end of the world, but it is something that the human eye doesn't see naturally. So when you see it, it kind of just reminds you that something about the image is off. To be fair, you do get better readout speeds when you switch to Super 35 mode, but if you're getting a full frame camera, most of us are gonna wanna shoot the full sensor, not crop in. Speaking of the sensor, con number two is moray and aliasing. So something else that the human eye doesn't really see naturally is moray, and that is something that is very prominent on this camera. But there are some solutions. You can do a pretty expensive OLPF installation by sending this off to a company like Kalari, and they'll install a OLPF onto your camera. Or you can use diffusion filters like the Tiffin Digital FX Diffusion. I've heard that that helps with moray and aliasing, but none of those solutions are gonna be perfect, and you still really need to watch out for really tight patterns in your shot. This isn't really just a Lumix issue. Almost every camera nowadays is gonna suffer from moray unless it has an OLPF filter on the sensor. Con number three is cropping in 4K60. This is a problem that never really bothered me too much, but recently I've been working for a client and they have wanted all of their footage captured in 4K60. So that takes my full frame camera down to a Super 35 camera, which honestly makes my lenses not get as wide and it makes the low light performance be less than ideal. So that is another con. Normally I shoot everything in 24 and use the full frame, but again, when you have certain clients that want all of their b-roll shot in 4k 60 you're gonna have a crop factor to deal with i think that is one thing that a lot of us lumix shooters hope can be remedied in the next lumix s series camera just to have full frame 4k 60 like the sony's do So my obsession with cameras has slowly but surely dwindled as the years have gone on, but really I'm not trying to sell you on the S52X. This is a great camera. It's got really good autofocus, every codec that you would really ever want, and the image stabilization is second to none. But I would encourage you not to obsess over any camera, thinking that getting it is going to make you better at creating images. All the talking headshots in this video were shot on a Panasonic GH5 with a 12-35 f2.8 lens. And to be honest, I could do 90% of what I do on the S52X with my GH5. I think that if you're at a point in your career where having the features that the S52X offers actually makes sense, then by all means, go for it and I think that you'll be really happy with it. But if you already have a capable camera and getting something like an S52X would be more of a sidestep as opposed to an upgrade, I don't think that getting it is going to suddenly make you better at creating images or telling stories. Mad props if you've made it to this point of the video. Be sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more content from me and I'll see you soon. Nothing to say can be